Bible. Let's go to chapter 1. Amen. And uh, Sister Kakili, you start reading introductions. Start reading the introduction part. Introduction. The war from the great war to meaning Christ or Messiah, and the word which combined to mean the study of Christ to the beginning is the study of the doctrine of Jesus Christ. Mary did not have any lay conception. The Bible does not suggest Mary bird was anything but a normal human bird. The, the clear conception is a belief that Mary was protected from ordinary sin. That Mary did not have a sin nature and was in pain, sin late. The problem with the doctrines of the immediate conceptions is that it is not taught in the Bible. The Bible now here describes Mary as anything but an ordinary human female whom God chose to be the mother of the man, Jesus Christ. Mary was undoubtedly a godly woman. We can see Luke chapter 1, verse 28. Mary was surely a wonderful wife and mother. Jesus is living, loved, and cherished. His mother. The Bible gives us no reason to believe that the Bible gives us every reason to believe that Jesus Christ is the only person who was not infected by sin and never committed a sin. Ecclesiastes 7 20, Romans 3 23, 2 Corinthians 5 21, 1 Peter 2 22, 1 John 3 5. The Bible teaches the miraculous version of of Jesus Christ, not the intellectual conception of Mary. All right, thank you. Thank you so much. Okay, that part is uh, very important. Now, we have theology is derived from the two Greek words, that is Christos, which uh, simply means Christ, and Logos, meaning word, reason, or study. Or study of the soul. When you say Christology, we mean to say the study of the doctrine of Jesus Christ. And therefore, it's a very important to understand. Number one, the first point that we would like to focus here is about the virgin birth. Now, there are different views and different opinions, different theories are there with regards to the virgin birth. We have already explained over here on, uh, on my textbook. You can see, which is the doctrine of the virgin birth is a crucial important. Because even from the Old Testament, it has been already proclaimed, prophesied. And now I want you to guys to turn the Bible to Isaiah chapter 7 and verse 14. Let's read out Isaiah chapter 7 verse 14. Can you guys read together? Therefore, the Lord preserved him to a sign. Behold, a virgin servant seed and bear a son, and the Lord his name in my heart. All right. The Lord himself shall give you a sign. Behold, a virgin shall conceive and bear a son, and shall call his name Emmanuel. All right. The very crucial. And we can see that this was a prophecy fulfilled right there in Matthew uh, 123. Now let's turn again to the Matthew chapter 1 verse 23. Behold a virgin shall be with child and shall, us, and shall bring forth a son and they said call his name Emmanuel. Which being interpreted is God with us. Now, therefore, it's important. First, let's look at how Scripture describes the event. And respond to Mary's questions. How will this be? Because Mary even was pondering and wondering. So Mary's question is that how this will be possible. Now, when you read that in Luke 1, 34. Okay, see that in Luke 1, 34. Then said Mary unto the angel, How shall this be seen? I know not a man. 
So, in other words, Mary is saying, how will this be possible? Okay? So, this was the Mary's questions, asking and saying, how this will, this, uh, how will this be? But the Gabriel, the angel God said, the Holy Spirit, underline that, it says the Holy Spirit will come upon you or overshadow you and the power of the both side will overshadow you. According to Luke 135. So the angel encourages Joseph to not fear marrying Mary with these words. What is conceived in her is from the Holy Ghost. That is not from man. So therefore, <clears throat> we can say that even as a man, that Jesus Christ was absolutely sinless. Unlike you and me, Jesus does not have a sinful father. He was absolutely sinless. Because you and I, we are the offsprings and ears of, we can say, Adam. There were the Bible clearly says, by one man, sin entered into the world, and all have sin. Now, when you study in Greek word, sin means missing the mark. Okay? That means uh, we cannot receive the glory of God. We cannot be called the child of God. We cannot be called the children of God. The reason is because we are all sinful. Because of the first man, Adam. But unlike you and me, that Jesus does not have a sin. Because the Bible clearly says over here, this is a very important Bible verse. All of you turn the Bible to Luke 135. Underline it. Luke 135. Please read out together. So, every one of you underline Holy Ghost. All right, clearly says the Holy Ghost shall come upon thee, and the power of the highest shall overshadow thee. Therefore, also the holy thing which shall be born of thee shall be called the Son of God. Are you guys clear? Now, <clears throat> Exactly seven years back or eight years back, I had a talk, a discussion with one rabbi. Now, to discuss the differences between the Christians and Judaism. Now, the first topic that he chose to have a discussion was regarding the circumcisions of Jesus Christ. Because I believe that Jesus Christ is God. We all say Jesus is God. He is the Patiani. Then the first thing, this... Rabbi, you know, Rabbi, the priests or the pastors or the teachers of so called Judaism. The first question that he answers is that, Pastor, would you please tell me regarding the circumcisions of Jesus Christ? Now, the same question is raised not just from the Judaism, but even from the Muslim world. Because even Islam considered that Jesus Christ to be one of the prophets. But not as God. Are you guys clear? And regarding this so called the Jehovah Witness groups, they also consider that Jesus Christ is nothing but Michael the Archangel. So that means, in the eyes of the Jehovah Witness denomination or religion, they don't believe that Jesus Christ is God. Alright, they said he is an angel. He is the chief Michael the Angels. That's what I believe. Now when we come to this so-called uh, the Islamic teaching, the Islamic teaching says that Jesus is one of the decorated pro, you know, prophets. He is one of the prophets, but he is inferior to the Muhammad. He is not God. They have a respect for Jesus, no doubt. But even the Islam says that Jesus is not God. He is prophet. All right, how do we say prophet in Mizo? 
Prophet means how do we say? Puitium. We say the uh, Zol name. All right. Yeah. Yeah. That is what we call prophet. So they have a regards for Jesus Christ. They say he's one of the prophets, but not God. Now, let's come with Judaism. Now, Judaism does not believe that he's even a prophet. So Judaism is saying that Jesus is not even a prophet. He is nothing but a sinner. He is nothing but a hundred percent human being. He is not God at all. He's not even the Lord or God. He's not even a prophet. He is nothing but a sinner, mere a human being. That's it. That's according to Judaism. The wars. Even their religion studies the angels. He is a created angel, Michael the Archangel. Jehovah Witnesses will say that he is Michael the Archangel. He's not God. Islam says he is one of the created prophets, but inferior to the Muhammad, but not God. But here Judaism is saying that Jesus is nothing but sinner and human being. He's not even a prophet. So he asked me the questions about, let's talk about the circumcisions of Jesus Christ. And the first question that I asked that, do you believe that God can be manifest in the human flesh? Do you believe that God manifests in the flesh? He said no. That means discussions, to have a discussion with you, it's, it's a waste of time. Because you don't believe in the New Testament. And, and you are saying, how is it possible for God to become a man? As I said on last Sunday, with man which is impossible, with God all things are possible. Hallelujah. And then I give him the, <clears throat> the response. I quote from the Genesis. Do you believe that God had a man-to-man -man wrestling with Jacob? Now tell me who is that man? Was he just an angel of God or God himself? Then the rabbi said he is one of the angels. I said stick to your word. And I said don't run away, stick to your word because I am going to quote it from the Old Testament because you are saying that it's just an angel. We want an angel that Jacob had a man to man wrestling. So are you sure that he is just an angel? Is it yes? So that means you don't believe that he is Yahweh? Is it yes? Then I, I said unto him, since you don't believe in New Testament, so there is no use of having discussions to have discussions on a New Testament. Because the problem is that you don't believe in the New Testament. But since you believe in the Old Testament, let me read from your Hebrew Bible. Then I took my Hebrew Bibles and I quoted from the Old Testament, from the Genesis, and I read it out and I asked him to read. That very moment he changed his mind, he just said, well, let's continue some other day. Okay, I want you guys to turn the Bible now. Let us see about this, <clears throat> that, that Jacob had that man-to-man -man wrestling with the Almighty. Hallelujah. All right, I want you to turn the Bible now. Let's go straight. In the Genesis chapter 32. Now, this has been the problems. The Christology is a subject that is a problem even in the first century because the Jewish people could not comprehend. They could not believe that God can be manifest in a human flesh. Now, the same problem is still prevailing even in these modern days. Even to this day, this is the problem with most of the people around the world because they could not accept the fact that God the Father can be manifested in a human flesh. I want you guys to turn the Bible. Genesis 32, and brother, mostly you read out. Verse 24, and go and read it down all the way to verse 30. 
Let's read that one. Let's see what it says. Verse 24. Then Jacob was left alone, and a man wrestling with him until the breaking of day. Now when she saw that she did not prevail against him, he tossed the shoulder of his hip and the shoulder of it, take off his work out of joy as he wrestled with him. And she said, Let me go for the day of grace. But she said, I will not let you go, I will let you bless me. So he says to me, What is your name? He said, Jacob. And he said, your name shall no longer be called Jacob, but Israel, for you have struggled with God and with man, and have prevailed. Then Jacob asked, saying, Tell me your name, I pray. And he said, Why is it that you ask about my name? And he blessed you there. So 30. Jacob, now read verse 30. Everyone, read verse 30 together. And so Jacob called all the name of all the days. Amen. So now Jacob built the altar of the Lord over there and called the name of the place what? Penel. And Jacob said, For I have seen Elohim. Wow. Because if you read that in Hebrew Bible, it says Elohim. For I have seen Elohim face to face, and my life is preserved. See, the thing is that that is a theophany. This one is the theophany. Yes, we cannot see the essence of God. We cannot see the spirit of God because that is invisible. But over here, Jacob cried out and said, I have seen God face to face. Yes, we cannot see the Spirit of God because the essence of God is Spirit. You can never see God. That's what it means. But this one is a visible form. So we call it Theo Feni. Now Theo means what? God. Feni means manifestation. So if you look at the Old Testament, there are multiples of examples how God appear in a visible form. Sometimes God appear like a man. Sometimes God appear like an angel of God. Sometimes God appeared even Moses in the burning of bush. God appeared to the children of Israel at night with fire. Fire was like a cloud over them, over the head of Israel. The fire. That fire is not an actual, literal fire, but that is also the theophany of God. Amen. You can see at the burning of booze, the voice cried out and said, Mosi or Moses, the place where you're standing is a holy place. Remove your sandals. Right? You see that? That is also theophany. So what we need to understand is <clears throat> many of the so-called the rabbi and Judaisms, you know, people, many times. They are lying to their own people. They are lying to their own members. That these are very common in the Old Testament. God appeared to the fathers, to the, to the, uh, the prophets of God, to the saints of God. In the Old Testament over again and again. In a visible form. Now we can see that here. With whom the Jacob had this wrestling, the man to man wrestling. He is not a literal angel. Because here Jacob said, For I have seen Elohim face to face, but yet my life is preserved. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. You understand that? So if this is possible, then how can we <coughs> say that it is impossible for God to be manifest in the flesh? So the questions that I asked the rabbi is that now you tell me, you said that is an angel, but according to the Hebrew Bible, it says Elohim. Jacob was having a man-to-man -man wrestling physically with Elohim. Amen. Hallelujah. This was a theophany. God appeared to Jacob as a man. Not only here, 
Let's continue reading in the Genesis chapter 18. Now look at again in Genesis chapter 18, even here is also one of the Theophany. If you hear God appear to Abraham, like an angels of the Lord. Now let's try to find out uh, from the Genesis chapter 18, <clears throat> verse 1 and verse 2. Read loud, all of you. And the Lord and he his eyes and Amen. Now look at here in verse 2 says, When Abraham lifted up his eyes and looked, and lo, the three men stood by him, and when he saw them, he ran to meet them from the thin door and bowed himself to what the ground. Now remember, here in Genesis 18 verse 2 says that three men, the Lord appeared to Abraham when he was in the plains of Mamre. But when Abraham looked those men, he saw there were three men. Now some say these three men indicates God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Ghost. But that is your only your assumption. I call it hypothesis assumption. That is your opinion that you are assuming that the three men is God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Ghost, but the reality is different. If you see the context, the three men is not God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Ghost, but one is the Lord himself, Yahweh himself, or Jehuah himself, and the other two is the actual angels of the Lord. How do we know? Let's find out. Okay? See again uh, Genesis 18, verse 22. Everyone read verse 22 now. Amen. That means Abraham stood yet before the Lord, and the conversation between Abraham and the Lord still continued. Amen. But these two men left, turned their faces from there, and they these two men went to Sodom. Now let's see Genesis chapter 19, verse 1. All of you read out together. Amen, amen. Thank you very much. Now you can see, guys. In the Genesis chapter 19, verse 1, said, And there came two angels to Sodom at the evening or at events. And the and Lord said in the gate of Sodom, and not seeing them, rose up to meet them, and he bowed himself with his face toward the ground. You see? Now, if you look at here in the Genesis uh, chapter 18, verse 22, it says here, the King James Bible, uh, the KJV Bible said, and the men turned their faces from thence and went to what where? Sodom. You may underline that, Sodom. All right? Now, when you read in Genesis chapter 19, verse 1, and there came two angels to Sodom. All right, in Genesis chapter 18, verse 1 and verse 2 said, When Abraham lifted up his eyes and looked, lo, the three men stood behind him. So when you compare, when you study the Genesis chapter 18, verse 22, and when you compare that with Genesis chapter 19, verse 1, the story is absolutely clear. Amen? It's absolutely clear. That means the three men are not God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Ghost, according to the context. 
According to the Genesis chapter 18 and verse 19, the three men is not God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Ghost, <coughs> but two is the angels of the Lord, and one is the Lord Himself. Hallelujah. And I want you guys to turn the Bible again and see. That uh, is chapter 18, verse 22 said. The two men that turned their faces from thence and went towards Sodom. But Abraham stood yet before the Lord. Now I want the student to identify it's L O R D. It's all in a capital letter. See your Bible. Capital. It's a capital L. It's a capital O. It's a capital R. Capital D. Now that, if you would read that in the Hebrew Bible. In the Hebrew text it says Yahweh. You see that? So here again, even to our father Abraham, God appeared to Abraham as a man. Praise the Lord. Now these things are not something uh, very uncommon, very common. If you study the Old Testament over again and again and again and again, the Lord Yahweh, who is not as God of, the God of Abraham, Jacob, and Isaac, he appeared to the saints of God. He appeared to the prophets and he appeared even to our father Abraham as a man. Hallelujah. Then why is that so-called the Judaism? And why did these modern rabbis and so-called scholars and teachers is disagreeing that it is impossible for God to be manifest in the human flesh? Amen. Amen. If God can appear as a man over again and again in the Old Testament to his children, then for God to become a man, it's not something impossible. Amen. This is very much possible. Therefore, I want you to turn the Bible straight to the first Timothy. Now, if you believe in the New Testament, you can clearly understand that Jesus Christ is not an ordinary man. And that Jesus Christ, our Lord, is indeed the God manifest in the flesh. All of you, please read out together. The first Timothy, chapter 3 and verse 16. Please read out. First Timothy, chapter 3 and verse 16. And Amen. So the Bible clearly says that God, everybody underline that, without controversy, great is the mystery of Godness. Right? God. Elohim. Now, if you would read that in the, in the Hebrew Bible, or we call it in the Hebrew text of the New Testament, that it clearly say Elohim. Elohim was manifest in the flesh. Amen. And when you read that in Greek text, it says Theo was manifested in the flesh. So the question here is, who is this God referring to? This is the God who created, who made the heavens and the earth. So the Bible, the Genesis chapter 1 verse 1. In the beginning, God created the heaven and the earth. The same God who created the heavens and the earth is now being manifest in the flesh. 
So what is the purpose behind for God to be manifest in the flesh? <laughs> Why did God become a man? The answer is very simple. To be our Savior. Amen. Hallelujah. Repeat after me. The answer is very simple, loud and clear. To be our Savior. Amen. In order to save us, it was necessary for God to become a man. Hallelujah. So I said to the rabbi, yes. Was Jesus Christ literally circumcised? I said 1000% yes. He was not circumcised as God, but he was circumcised as a man. Are you guys listening to what I'm saying? Hallelujah. So even the Muslims apologies are saying this. If Jesus Christ is God, you Christians are saying, Jesus is Lord. Jesus is God. Now you tell me, if Jesus is Lord and God, how can <coughs> God circumcise? The problem is that, friends, that these people do not believe in the Holy Scriptures. And they do not believe in the New Testament. And they all don't believe in the Lord Jesus Christ, in the deity of Christ. And the, the fact is that they don't even well, you know, believe that God could even manifest in the flesh. Alright? They could not even believe that God could even manifest in the flesh. They are just like the people who were in the first century. They, were, they are just like the people of the Jews. The Israelites, the Jewish people who are questioning the deity of Jesus Christ over again and again and who even stoned him and who even crucified him. Now I want to remind you that when Jesus was graduating in the midst of the Pharisees, at one point of time that Jesus said in John 10 30, he went on to say that I and my father are one. Amen. That means that Jesus Christ is claiming to be the father. Hallelujah. Because every, every Jewish people, because they have an access to the Old Testament, it's Holy Scripture, so they know that there is only one father. I repeat. They all know that there is only one Father who is known as God. Hallelujah. And also understand they are very monotheistic. That means they believe in only one true God. I understand what I'm saying. Because they have an access to the Old Testament scripture, Holy Scripture, and according to the Old Testament scripture, there is only one Father and one God. So when Jesus said, I and my father one, what is the message that Jesus Christ is passing on to the Jewish people? What is the message that Jesus Christ is giving to the Pharisees? The message is loud and clear that Jesus is saying that I am the father. Amen. Because there cannot be two fathers according to the Holy Scripture. Turn the Bible now. Let's have a, let's have a look at there. Malachi chapter 2 verse 10. All right, let's read out together. Malachi chapter 2 and verse 10, please. Can you read out together? All, all of you guys there. Malachi chapter 2 verse 10. Read out together. Underline. Amen. So according to the Old Testament, Malachi chapter 2 verse 10 says, Have we not all one? Father, continue, had not one God created us. So when Jesus said, I and my Father are one, oh my God, the Pharisees are saying, the people of Israel, the Israelites are saying, the Jewish people are saying, that how dare you claim to be God? Because they knew that Jesus indeed claim to be God the Father. 
Because when Jesus said, I and my father one, all right, if you look at the context, it is a very clear that Jesus is claiming directly, he's claiming to be God the Father. Amen. Suppose if you say, I and the principles are one, that means the message is very clear because there is only one principle. If you claim to be the principle, that means you are the principle. Because there cannot be two principles. There cannot be two prime ministers in this country. So according to the Old Testament, it is a very clear and that there is only one God, there is only one Father. So when Jesus said, I and my Father one, the Jewish people you know, clearly comprehended what Jesus meant. That is the reason why they said this is nothing but a blasphemy. What did they say? I want you guys to turn the Bible now and John 10. The Gospel of John to the 10 sends on to the 10 verse 30 through 30 to uh, see here up to verse 33. Everybody read out. Uh, sends on to the 10 uh, verse 30 to 33. Can we read out together? I and my father are one. Continue of the verse 33. So the Jews are absolutely clear. They understood. I use the word here. The Jewish people understood 1000% that Jesus Christ claimed to be God the Father. Amen. Hallelujah. And the Jews answered to our Lord Jesus Christ saying, <clears throat> for a good work, for a good work, we stone thee not. It's not because of the good work, but for blasphemy. For blasphemy. And because that thou, being a man, makest thyself God. That means. The Jews are saying, not because of blasphemy, not because of your good work, we intend to stone you. Not because of your good work, not because of your good report, it's because of blasphemy. Because you being a man, a man and man, that means you being a human being, just one of the human beings, you claim yourself to the God. So the Jewish people 1000% understood that Jesus Christ claimed to be God the Father. Amen. The same problem, it continues even to this day. It is a very unfortunate that many of our Christian leaders, many of our Christian uh, church members, many uh, Christian uh, church members turn to Judaism. We are not against Judaism. But what Judaism claim is absolutely wrong. What they are teaching is 1000% wrong according to the Holy Scripture. Because the Holy Scripture, be the Old Testament or the New Testament, again and again testify that Jesus is God. Hallelujah. Amen. Because the Jews don't believe. That Jesus is God manifest in the flesh. And that is the reason why they cannot understand. Alright. Even the humanity of Jesus Christ. Therefore they keep asking these questions. Islam and Judaism. They keep asking the same question. If Jesus is God or Lord. How comes that God is being circumcised? 
the Bible respond to them that it is possible because God fully manifested in the flesh. God who created the heavens and the earth became a man. So as a man, he was circumcised. As a man, he was tempted by the devil. As a man, he was hungry. As a man, he died. But as God, he is an immutable God, unchanging God. He lives forever and ever and ever. Hallelujah. So the, the second question, how do these so-called the anti-Christians attack the deity of Christ is that the second thing what we need to understand is they will say if you people claim that Jesus is Lord, Savior or God tell me how is it possible for God to die? Can God die? According to the Holy Scripture is it possible for God to die? We never say God died. Neither we say the Father died. Amen. Hallelujah. Because I, I have already told you, and the term Father indicates the deity of the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. The term Father indicates deity, and the term Son or Child only indicates humanity. So we don't say the Father died. Neither we say God died on the country. What we are saying is according to the Holy Scripture, as a man he died. Hallelujah. Humanity died. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. As a man he died, but as God he even raised his own body. Praise the Lord. I want you guys to turn the Bible and check it out again <coughs> from the Gospel of John chapter 1. Please underline and read out. Let us try to determine <coughs> the deity of our Lord Jesus Christ based on the same John 1 3. All of you read out together. Read again. All things were made by him. Oh man, it does not say that all things were made by them. Neither it says all things were made by some other God. What, what it says here is all things were made by Jesus. Amen. Hallelujah. Because you can see here, John is a <coughs> Talking about our Lord Jesus Christ. The message is about <clears throat> all about Jesus. Because in verse 14 he said, And the war was made flesh and dwell among us. So the, 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 the one and only <clears throat> God who was made flesh, who manifests in the flesh, is none other but Jesus Christ. So John is pointing to the Lord Jesus and he is saying that all things were made not through him because modern versions say through him therefore we don't use in our worships in our Bible classes we don't use modern English perverted Bibles amen you need to change it and Kezebi yeah, even that also says through him. Yes, there is a big difference between by him and through him. Through him means Jesus is not a creator directly. He is used by the superior God. All right, use him and created the heavens and earth through him. For example, I send you letter through Kakai, through Kulentam, through Larodiki. Through Sister Kekili, I open the door for you through Brother Lenu. Then when I don't open the door, I don't make the door. Everything is done by Kulenu, but through I use uh, only uh, 
I use only Brother Lenu. All right? True, true, true. So, my friend, this is the reason why that we don't use the modern perverted so-called Holy Bibles of the modern Holy versions of English Bible. Because if you look at if you look at in the Greek text, even in the original text, it does not say through him. It says by him. Amen? Amen. So even in Mizo Bible, some version said, and give to Amma Mangin Asiam. Amma Mangin Asiam no. And give Amma Siam any direct. Two big difference. True is true and by him is totally opposite to one another. So here the Bible says all things, which include the heavens and earth, <coughs> the thrones and dominions, everything, visible or invisible, thrones and dominions, everything was created by him and for him. Hallelujah. Let's continue reading verse 10. Amen. Read one more time. Amen. Hallelujah. He was in the world, cosmos. And the world was made by them. No. It says made by him. Hallelujah. Some Christian denominations justifying the doctrines of three persons and four persons because those terms and terminology is nowhere to be found in the Holy Scriptures. I call it nothing but a man-made doctrines. We don't buy man-made doctrines. We don't want to waste our time in learning so-called denominations man-made doctrines. What we buy and what we only accept is the living word of God. Hallelujah. Amen. Because as Jesus said, the living word, his word is unchanging. Because Jesus said, heaven and earth may pass away, but my words. What? What is the next sentence? What is the next phrase? My word will never pass away. Hallelujah. So that means something that will remain forever is only the living word of God. The word of God is not as unchanging. And therefore, my friend, we don't want to mix with man-made doctrines and denomination doctrines. We stand for the living word of God. And according to the living word of God, it clearly says that he was in the world. Who was he? He is referring to our Lord Jesus. He was in the world 2,000 years ago. And who, what is his name? Jesus Christ. Who's that? Jesus. He was in the world and the world was made by him. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. So therefore we are saying, our answer is that yes, as a man, he died. As God, he raised his own body. As a man, he was tempted. But as God, he cast out the demons. Hallelujah. As a man, he was hungry. But as God, he said, I'm the bread of life. As a man, he thirsts for the water just like you and I. As a man, he said, I'm thirsty. But as God, he said, I'm the, I am the everlasting water. I am the living water. Hallelujah. As a man, he cried and he wept. Because the Bible said that Jesus wept. But as God, his Lazarus come forth. Hallelujah. As a man, he does not know the future. He is not even omniscient. But as God, he knows the past, the present, and the future. He knows all things. As a man, he was searched by his mother and father because the Bible said and that his early mother and father 
fleshly mother and father, so called Mary and Joseph. They were searching and looking for Jesus. As a man, he was not only present, but as God, he is only present. Therefore, Jesus said, if one or two are gathered together in my name, if one or two are gathered in my name, I shall be in your midst. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Amen. So what is the message? The message is loud and clear. That means that as God, he is omnipresent. Amen. Praise the Lord. You understand that? So our answer is very simple. We don't say that the Father died. We don't say God the Almighty died. All we say is the Son died. Or we can say, as a man he died. Hallelujah. But as God, he gives life. As God, he is a living God. He may die as man, but as God, as God he never died. Therefore, Hebrews chapter 13 verse 8 says, Jesus the same yesterday, today, forever the same. So this is something I want you to understand. Now remember the same problem. In the first century that the Jewish people face. One of the biggest problems they face is that they could not accept the fact that Jesus is God manifest in the flesh. Even to this day, the 2000 years may, 2000 years may already pass, but even to this day, all the so-called Jewish people, non-Christians, Judaism, Jewish people, even to this day, they do not believe that Jesus is God manifest in the flesh. It is a very obvious that's the reason why they reject the Holy New Testament. Because if they would not reject the Holy New Testament, then all their members or the members of the synagogues one by one every one of them will accept will come to the knowledge of Jesus Christ and they would eventually accept that Jesus is God manifest in the flesh or Jesus he is the Lord God Almighty in order to fool in order to deceive their own members they reject the New Testament. So in the eyes of these so-called Judaism religions, New Testament is nothing but a dirty testament. And Jesus is nothing but a sinner, the worst sinner ever being born on this earth. That's how they term our Lord Jesus Christ. That's how they labeled our Lord Jesus Christ. For them is not even a prophet. And all his disciples, including the 12 disciples, including Apostle Paul, in the eyes of this so-called Judaism and Jewish religion, they are nothing but a sinners, a criminals. That's how they were leveled upon the apostles and disciples of Jesus Christ. But my friend, you can't change the fact, hallelujah. You must remind yourself that once upon a time, there was a man called Saul who was known as the Pharisees of Pharisees. Hallelujah. Grew up from Gamaliel's feet. He grew up. He grew up from the Gamaliel's feet. Hallelujah. A very educated man. But he himself could not silence the deity of Christ. Hallelujah. Finally. His name was known as Paul. Hallelujah. From Saul, he became Paul. Praise the Lord. And then he is known as the apostles, Paul, to the Gentiles. Praise the Lord. Amen. He cannot oppose the deity of Christ. And finally, he has to accept the deity of Christ and he even himself was baptized in the name of Jesus Christ according to Acts 22 verse 16. 
Remember Apostle Paul. He himself was a Pharisee of Pharisees. Who tortured and persecuted the Christians. Who would put the believers into the prisons. But finally Jesus appeared unto him. And said soul, soul, soul. Why hast thou persecuted me? He looked up and said. Who are you Zahweh? In other words. Who are you? Jehovah. And the boy said unto him, I am Jesus of Nazareth, whom thou persecuted. From that very moment he cried out to God, he was already blind. From that very moment he came to know that Jesus Christ is not an ordinary man. That Jesus is not just an ordinary man. That Jesus is none other but the God of Abraham, Jacob and Isaac. Hallelujah. And that is the reason why you can see in Acts 22 verse 16, Ananias came unto him and said, Brother Saul, what are you waiting? Arise and be baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus and was away thy sins. And immediately he rose up and he went there and he was baptized. He was immersed into the water. For the forgiveness of his sins. He received the water baptism in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Amen. So you need to remind them my friends. Hallelujah. Amen. Even the chief high priest, the Pharisees and all the chief high priest. All together they could not even confront only one man who is called Apostle Paul. Hallelujah. Amen. He was trained. He was educated. He knew the law of Moses more than anyone else. Hallelujah. Because he grew up from the feet of Gamaliel. He had the high degree. He was an educated person. But finally he has to accept the fact that Jesus is not an ordinary man. He is the God of Abraham, Jacob and Isaac. And that is the reason why Apostle Paul went on to say that every knee shall bow. That every tongue will confess in heaven, on earth, and under the earth. Three things he mentions. Heaven, earth, under the earth. Hallelujah. Heaven, earth, and under the earth. Every knee shall bow. Every tongue will confess at the name of Jesus. And every knee and every tongue will confess and say that Jesus is Lord. Hallelujah. So that is the reason, my friends, I urge you to stand firm in the living word of God. Here at ABTS, to be very honest, yes, we do have curriculum, textbooks, study materials, and notes and etc. We provide to our students as a study guide for your benefits. But we don't even rely on our textbook. We don't rely on the, our notes and study materials. We rely on the holy living word of God. Hallelujah. Amen. Praise the Lord. Whatever we say and whatever we teach and preach is based on the holy word of God. Therefore, we often say according to Nowadays in this modern days you will have, you will seldom heard preachers saying or pastors saying according to the word of God. They will quote one Bible verse, they will read up from one Bible verse, and they will talk about everything. Including our country, including our nomenclature, including our community, including our tribes, including our nation, they will talk here and there. Not based on the Bible. Here at ABTS, the first thing is first. Yes, we love our community. I will never say I, like, I don't love my community. I love my community. And I'm sure that this, you all do the same, right? 
Even a girl like Sister Kakili and uh, Larudi, I know you guys love your own community. Praise the Lord. Amen? Amen. But more than my community, more than my own family, first thing first, I love my Jesus and I love his words. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. All the rest of things come second and third. Because that is the most important thing. The first thing first is that we uphold. We rely on the living word of God. As Apostle Paul said, turn the Bible, in the second Timothy, chapter 3 and verse 16. Second Timothy chapter 3 and verse 16. All of you read out together. Let, let me hear again. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. <clears throat> yes, read out uh, the second Timothy 3 16. Amen. Repeat one more time. Amen. So all scriptures is given by inspiration of God. Now I want you to not know this, not this. The word inspiration here, if you study from Greek, what it means, God breathed. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. That means God owned the living word of God. The scripture testifies of Jesus. It belongs to him. He sanctified it. Hallelujah. He purified it. He preserved it. He owns it. That's what it means. He, he created it. Hallelujah. He made it. Hallelujah. That's what it means by breathing. Now when you study that in Greek word says God breathed. Say again. God breathed. Hallelujah. That's the meaning of inspiration. So all scripture is given by the inspiration of God. Amen. Is profitable for doctrine. That means teaching. For reproof. For corrections. For instructions in righteousness. That the man of God may be perfect, thoroughly furnished unto all good works. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. That is the reason, my friend, we don't care. We may have our study materials. And we may have our own notes, curriculum, etc. But to be very honest, we don't rely on those materials. We rely on the living word of God. Hallelujah. Therefore, we often use those phrases according to the Bible. We baptize in Jesus' name because that is according to the Bible and according to the church history. We pray in Jesus' name because that is according to the Bible. We do all things in water and deeds. We do all things in Jesus' name because that too is according to the Holy Bible. Amen. Because the Bible says in Colossians chapter 3 verse 17. Whatsoever you do in word or in deed, do all in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. All right. Now, before we wind up, now let's go to the second topic. Is about, this is a very uh, sometimes disturbing. It's quite disturbing because when they ask this kind of questions. Sometimes some non-Christian people would say, if you are Christian, that means you must be believing that Mary is the mother of, of God. Wow. The Bible never says that Mary is the mother of God. Amen. That is according to Roman Catholicism. With all due respect to Roman Catholicism, we are not against Roman Catholics. But we prefer to speak the truth. Hallelujah. Because they proudly say that Mary is the mother of God. Now I want to tell you my friend. If Mary is the mother of God. That means you are saying Mary is also God. 
How can you be the mother of God? Sister Kakili, for example. You being a human being, how can you be the mother of God? If you are the mother of God, then mean you are also God. And that is the reason why according to denomination, the Roman Catholicism doctrine says that Mary is the mother of God. They call it Theotokos. Theo means God. K-O-S. Theotokos means mother of God. Bible never say that Mary is the mother of God. Hallelujah. If Mary is the mother of God, then she must be God, her, God herself. But that is not true. Mary is just like you and me. She's just nothing but an ordinary human being. She was an ordinary <clears throat> human. Used in a very special manner by God. Hallelujah. To carry out the missions of God, Mary was used by God. Therefore, even Mary worshipped our Lord Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Turn the Bible. If you don't believe me, you believe you should believe in the Bible. Even Mary <coughs> worshipped the Lord. And who is Lord? Jesus. Hallelujah. Because every knee and every tongue will confess that Jesus is Lord. Look at here. According to Saint Luke chapter 2, Okay, uh, let's uh, focus on verse uh, chapter 1, Luke chapter 1. Start reading from verse 38. Luke chapter 1, verse 38. And Mary said, Behold, the handmaid of the Lord be it unto me according to thy word, and the angel departed from her. Amen. Also read out in verse 45 and 46, 47. And Amen. Hallelujah. Now you can see over here. That even Mary worship our Lord Jesus Christ. You see that? Look at here in verse 46. And Mary said, My soul do magnify the Lord. 47. My spirit had rejoiced in God, my Savior. Hallelujah. Who is the God Savior? Look at here. Luke chapter 2. Verse 10 and 11. Everyone read, uh, read out together. Luke chapter 2 verse 10 and 11. And then they said, Fear not, for the Lord will be called Luke and Joseph. We shall be to all people. For unto you is born in this day. Amen. For unto you is born this day in the city of David a Savior which is Christ the Lord. Now you tell me to whom was Mary worshipping? Hallelujah. She was worshipping to the Savior. And who is a savior according to the, the New Testament. We all know that Jesus Christ the only savior. Praise the Lord. So what does it tell? It means that what the Roman Catholicism claim. Saying that Mary is the mother of God. That is absolutely wrong. And heretical doctrine. Not based on the Holy Scripture. 
Yes, it based on Raman yeah, doctrines, based on Raman's uh, creeds. It must be based on their own creeds, but not according to the Bible. Amen. Now, <clears throat> not only that, the Roman Catholic doctrines, they often claim that G, uh, sorry, Mary is uh, the Queen of Heaven. The phrase, the Queen of Heaven, appears in the Bible twice in the Old Testament. But nowhere it says that Mary is the Queen of Heaven. It's a simple thing to add something which is not in the Holy Scriptures. You want to know who is the Queen of Heaven in the Holy Bible? According to the Bible, the phrase, I repeat, the phrase, the Queen of Heaven, appears in the Holy Bible only twice. Underline that. Both times in the book of the Jeremiah. The first incident is in the connection with the things that Israelites were doing that provoke the Almighty God to anger. Because when the Israelites were seized, the Queen of Heaven, the Israelites provoke the Almighty God to anger. All right? Entire families <coughs> were involved in idolatry. The children gather woods and men use it to build altars <coughs> to worship false gods. The women were engaged in kneading dog and baking cakes to cakes of a cakes of bread for the Queen of Heaven. I want you to turn the Bible now. Let us See who is the Queen of Heaven. All right, I, I told you the phrase the Queen of Heaven appears in the Bible, yes, only twice. But when you know that the Queen of Heaven, who is the Queen of Heaven? It will shock you. The Queen of Heaven is nothing but the pagans, Assyrians. And Babylonians, goddess. But the Roman Catholicism is saying that Mary is the Queen of Heaven. Now you turn the Bible, let the scripture answer, let the Bible speak for us. Open the Bible to Jeremiah chapter 7, verse 18. Let us see, according to the Bible, who is the Queen of Heaven. We don't disrespect any organization. We are not against. We are not even condemning Roman Catholics. But we prefer to speak the truth according to the Bible. Now let's find out according to the Bible who is the Queen of Heaven. All of you in the Bible to Jeremiah. Jeremiah chapter 7. Are you guys there? Yes, Jeremiah chapter 7 verse 18. Would you please read loud together? Amen. And also let's continue reading. Even in Jeremiah chapter 44, verse 17 to 25. Can you please read loud together? Jeremiah chapter 44, verse 17 to 25. But we will serve thee to what shall have seen more forth out of our own mouth, to burn our incense unto the queen of heaven, and to pour out our offerings unto our earth. But 
lake of the burning city, we don't have that. And for our great offerings and power, we have made the old kings and the sweet and sweet and sword and the white and the And when we are friends, we know that and for our great offerings and power, did we make our kings to worship God and for our money to bring out to God our God. All right, thank you so much. Yes, okay, fine, guys. Now, from here we can understand one thing. In the eyes of God, to bake a cake and to worship the Queen of Heaven was nothing but abomination in the eyes of God. The Lord is saying, You, the Israelites, you have provoked me to anger because you are doing nothing but evil things in my eyes. Because the Lord said, I am the jealous God. I will not bear you. Seeing you worshiping a man made God, seeing you worshiping the pagan gods, gods. So the Queen of Heaven, according to the Holy Bible, is nothing but Assyrians, Babylonians, goddess. In the Bible, she has a various Elias' name, including Asterix and Esther. As Aster. That is the reason why even the word Easter is also absolutely non-biblical and therefore we don't prefer to say happy Easter I prefer to use the word happy resurrection I have no problem but the day I was baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus according to the New Testament that is the day that I have been unified with Christ and his death the burial and the resurrection hallelujah praise the Lord but I don't have a problem when say people say happy resurrections. Yes? But I do not recommend, I don't encourage my students or my members to say happy Easter. Because even the word, the phrase Easter is a name derived from the Babylonian goddess. Egyptians would say Easter. That is I S H T A R. In the English pronunciation, they would say, in the English pronunciation, they would say E is now I is turning to E. Easter. But you know who's that Easter? Easter is nothing but a pagan goddess. Jeremiah, the prophet Jeremiah, described here as the Queen of Heaven. She is none other but a Semiramis. If you study the ancient religion, the Babylonian religion, she is also known as Semiramis, who was the wife of Nimrod. And you may ask, who is the Nimrod? Nimrod was known as the first Babylonian imperial. You want to know who is the Nimrod? Turn the Bible to Genesis chapter 10. Turn the Bible to Genesis chapter 10. According to the Bible, Nimrod is... Who is a Nimrod? Read verse 8 and verse 10 together. All of you. And God saw the dead Nimrod, he began to be a mighty one in the earth. He was a mighty one in the earth before the Lord. Wherefore it is said, He went as Nimrod the mighty one in the earth before the Lord. And he knew of his kingdom was the sign of the Lord, so that the red and the rich and the dark men in the land of the earth. All right, the land of Sinai, whatever. Amen. So, who began who? Nimrod. And even if you study the word, Nimrod means rebellious. He's not rebelling the Satan, but he's rebelling against the Almighty God, the one and only who created him. Now, look at here. Who is Kuz? Kuz is known as the son of. Uh, now, according to here, the Bible, the son of Ham, yes. Who is Ham? Ham is the son of Noah. 
But you know who is the harm? Harm is the one who received a curse. Harm is the one and only who received a curse from his father. Now tell me why was Ham being cursed by his father? Why Noah cursed Ham? Because he saw his father naked and he doesn't bother to cover him up. Are you guys clear? Shem and Zaphet received the blessings from the God because Noah blessed Shem and Zaphet but he pronounced a curse upon Ham. Ham now beget Kuz, Kuz beget Nimrod. And now this man is rebelling against God from the day one. What did he do? He started rebelling against God, against his grandfather's God. Rebelling against God, he started a war, you know, mates and develop so called the idol worship that is later on people started to worship him as God that is the reason my friend you can see in verse 10 said the beginning of his kingdom was Babel Babel is none other but Babylon my friend Eric, Akkad and Kalmet in the land of Sinar I want you guys on the line if you look at it geographically the land of Sinar or the land of Sinar, whatever you pronounce, these is known as the land of Babylon. Land of Sinar, Kantihi, Babylon, Hasanidhi. You understand? Geographically. Now, today, by us, where is Judea? Judea is the land of Palestine, where the Israelites are occupying. You understand that? So, the land of Sinar is the area. It is the land which is known as Babylon. Now remember, Nimrod began to become the first Babylonian emperor, emperor. And later on in verse 11, what happened? He engineered, he became the leader for these pagans, for these heathen people. He became light of God. They literally started worshiping him. And what did they do? They built. Now look at here in uh, Genesis 11 verse 2. It came to pass they deserted from the east and they found a plain in the land of Sinai. And they dwell here. Look at here. Nimrod was the king of, in the land of Sinai, right? Now look at here in the Genesis 11 verse 2. These are the people of the Babylonians, these pagans, these heathens. What did they do here? They found the plain in the land of Sinai, and what did they do? They dwell here. And uh, what did they do the next? They built a city and a tower. Whose top may reach to unto heavens. Now they stop doing things in again the Almighty God. They want to build the great and magnificent tower. We know that that is uh, the tower bubble, right? I'm sure that you guys heard about a bubble of tower. Yeah. And what did God do? God scattered them upon all the face of the earth. And the, the, the people use one language. But God confounds or confused the language. And God scattered them upon all the face of the earth. Look at here in uh, Genesis uh, chapter 11 verse 8. So the Lord... Scatter them abroad from thence upon the face of all the earth, and they left off to build the city. Therefore, it is the name of it called Babel, because the Lord did there confound the language of all the earth, and from thence did the Lord scatter them abroad upon the face of all the earth. This is known as a Babylonian religion. From the time onward, they started worshiping the three gods. They call it Trinity. The Babylonian Trinity is Nimrod, Semiramis, and their Elizabeth son, Tammuz. According to historians, 
that Moose was born on 25th December. Therefore, my friends, we are not against people who celebrate Christmas. Gathering and worshiping God, praying and teaching, listening, believing the word of God is wonderful, great. Amen. But to assume that Jesus literally born on 25th December is a joke. You know what? No one knows when Jesus was born. Hallelujah. But one thing is certain that God indeed became a man. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. He manifested in human flesh. That's what the Bible says. We never know if the birthday of Jesus is so important that the New Testament church, the early church would have celebrated it. Amen. Hallelujah. Nowhere from Genesis to Revelation, nobody celebrates Christmas. The first Christmas was celebration started in the year 336 on the line. 336 by the Roman Catholic Church. After the Nicaea Council, they passed this resolution that they want to retain the Babylonian celebrations, including the 25th December observation. Earlier, known as the birthday of Tammuz. They chain it as the birthday of Jesus. These are the reasons behind why the Islam and many other non-Christian groups are not buying the gospel that we are preaching today. They are becoming a hindrance and a stumbling block. So one person told me that, brother, what you said is very good. But since you people celebrate all these pagans originated, pagans origins, customs and religious festivals, therefore I don't want to come. I don't want to become a Christian. I said, I don't, I don't insist you. I don't ask you to celebrate all these pagan celebrations. Even I personally don't celebrate. I want you to come and accept the living word of God. I want you to repent of your sins and be baptized in Jesus' name. That is the only way that you can have an eternal life. Hallelujah. Because only Jesus can give you the everlasting life. Nobody can save you. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. So these are the reasons why. These are known as the Roman Catholicism traditions and customs. You know what? Therefore, understand, according to the Bible, we know Semiramis was known as the Queen of Heaven by the pagans. And therefore, according to Jeremiah chapter 7, verse 18. And Jeremiah chapter 44, verse 17, 18, 19, 20 declares that the queen of heaven was none other but, but the pagan goddesses, Assyrians, and the Babylonian goddess, who was also known as Semiramis, or she's also known as Asterot, Asterot. All right, she so have many uh, Elias' name in the Bible. And remember when the children of Israel make a big uh, and uh, when they worship these, uh, the, this pagan goddess who is known as the queen of heaven, the Lord said, you have provoked me to anger. In the eyes of God, worshiping the queen of heaven is nothing but abomination. There is no queen of heaven there has never been a queen of heaven. There is most certainly king of heaven, lord of hosts, and the lion. Amen. You want to know the phrase queen of heaven is nowhere in the Bible. But certainly king of heaven, lord of hosts, and Jehovah our Lord Jesus Christ is there. The lord of hosts is Jesus. The lord of glory is Jesus. The king of kings is Jesus. The king of heaven is Jesus. Jesus alone, Jesus alone rules in heaven and earth. Matthew 28 verse 18. What did Jesus say? All the authority. Repeat after me students. All the authority. Is given unto me. In heaven. And earth. Amen. So who alone rules in heaven and earth? Jesus. There is no queen of heaven. Hallelujah. According to the Holy Scripture and history, the queen of heaven was nothing but pagan goddess. 
Babylonian and Assyrian pagan goddesses. Amen. Hallelujah. In the Bible, there is only one Patien, no Patien Nu. Amen. Goddess means Patien Nu, Mother God. Just like you see, uh, let's say one is the male God and one is a female God. <laughs> that means there will be a grandmother, grand, grandmother God and grandfather God. <laughs> Oh my God. These kinds of concepts are nothing but idolatry, paganism. That's what the Bible call it abominations. When the children of God worship so called Queen of Heaven, the Lord said, This is nothing but abomination unto me. Alright? This is an evil thing you have done, that you have done an evil thing in my eyes. And according to the Bible, we know the one and only who alone rules in heaven and earth is not a queen of heaven, but Jesus Christ alone. Amen. Therefore, all the authority in heaven and earth is in the hands of Jesus Christ. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Because he's the maker of the heaven and the earth. Therefore, we can also see that in the Colossians chapter 1 and verse 16 said, all the heavens uh, thrones and dominions, principalities and power, all things were created by him and for him. Amen. Alright? So I want you guys to read out a Colossians 116. Let's read loud together. Everyone on the line, all things were created by him and for him. I remember, uh, I'm not condemning any schools or, you know, backbiting and gossiping any uh, previous seminary. In one renowned, a well-known, one of the most premier Christian school, Christian seminary in South India once, they have a one booklet and uh, when I was reading that booklet there was a questions mark the questions mark is this who created the heavens and the earth surprisingly that seminary claimed to be biblical bible based bible curriculum Christ centered King James Bibles believing fundamentals Biblical seminary. You know what? The answers really shocked me. Because I don't expect from a so-called biblical seminary or biblical seminary to have those kind of answers. You know what is the answer in that booklet? It is written. The question is who created the heavens and the earth? The answer is God the Trinity, oh my God. I'm really wondering, are you a biblical or denominational Christian? Now if you call yourself denominational Christian, the choice is yours. Because that is according to your denominations doctrine. That is according to your creeds. And maybe your bylaw says that. But if you claim to be a biblical or biblical, Pure biblical seminary, then how can you say Trinity or Triune God or Trimurti? Because you can search for if you search for 10,000 years, nowhere you will see that Triune God or Trimurti or Trinity created the heavens and earth according to the Bible. According to the Bible, who created the heavens and the earth? The answer is there. Amen. Colossians 1.16. Read out what it says. Who created the heavens and the earth? According to the Holy Bible. Read out. For by him were all things created, that are in heaven, and that are on earth, 
Is he right and is he square? Whether they be gods of dominions or principalities or powers, all things were created by him and for him. Amen. So the Holy Scripture said, All things were created by him. It does not say created by them. By him and for him. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. He was in the world. The world was made by him. The world knew him not. All things were made by him, and without him, nothing was made that was made. Colossians 1 3. Uh, sorry, John 1 3. John 1 10. So, according to the Bible, we know that Jesus Christ the Lord is the creator of the heavens and the earth. Therefore, he does not share his rule or his throne or his authority with anybody. Amen? No queen of heaven. Yes, there is a queen of heaven. The phrase queen of heaven is mentioned twice in the Holy Bible. But when you study the context, those queen of heaven is known as a pagan goddess. Patien ring lo tu te milim lung behold patien lung te chul. That is called goddess. All right, are you guys clear now? And that is a sin in the eyes of God to even be a king for the queen of heaven and worship that queen of heaven. Now, they were, I'm saying, they were as, as a creator as the almighty God, Jesus, he does not share his rule or his throne or his authority with anyone. I want you to turn the Bible, Isaiah, Chapter 44, Isaiah chapter 44, verse 6. I repeat, Isaiah chapter 44 and verse 6. Let's read loud together. Thus says the Lord in the and his redeeming power of I am the Lord, I am the Lord, I am the Lord, I am the Everybody read again Isaiah 44 and verse 24. Amen. Now you can see here that is the reason why I'm saying that our Lord Jesus Christ, as the Almighty God, He does not share His rules. Or his or throne or his authority with anybody. Therefore, Isaiah 44 verse 6. And I am the first and I am the last. Beside me, there is no God. Hallelujah. Amen. And according to the New Testament, who is the first and the last? Jesus. Because Jesus said, Behold, Revelation 22, verse 12 and 13 said, Behold, I come quickly. I am the first and I am the last. I am the beginning and the end, the first and the last. Hallelujah. Am I right? Hallelujah. So, I also want you to uh, uh, note it, Isaiah 44 and verse 24. Thus said the Lord, the Redeemer, he that formed thee from the womb. I am the Lord that make all things, that spread forth the heavens alone, and that spread it abroad the earth by myself. So here, the God of Abraham, Jacob and Isaac, the one true God, is saying that I'm the one that who make all things that spread for the heavens alone and that spread it abroad, even the earth by myself. That means I alone, myself, I have created the heavens and the earth. Mani chava. Mizo Bible said, Mani chava. Kai pertu. Mani chava. Le siem tu zakanit. Hallelujah. If Kulian Tham said, Mani Chava, keyboard, 
Apparently, that's an engineer. That means he alone made, he played the keyboard. Am I right? Lenu is not involved. I'm not involved. Kakili is not involved. <laughs> because he's saying, by myself, I made, I played the keyboard. So the, what, is, what is the message? It means that I alone created the heavens and the earth. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord, guys. Therefore, understand this, uh, that today, therefore, we don't buy, we don't consider man-made doctrines, denominated doctrines, as the living word of God. We only consider and accept and we buy only the Holy Scripture. Amen. Because only the Holy Bible or the Holy Scripture is not an unchanging word. And the Lord God Almighty says, I don't know 22, why are we so much sticking to the Bible? Terms. Why are we so much relying on the Holy Scripture? You want the answer? The answer is here. You want to see the answer? Read Revelation chapter 22 and verse 18 and 19. Okay, let's read together. All of us. One, two, three. For I the that of the Amen. Yeah. 